Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday night. It is the Earthmaster out here about 8.02 p.m. here, California time, Thursday, August or uh, September 5th, 2024. Latest activity here shows a 1.3 into the California area. Uh, we'll get to the rest of the world earthquake activity here in just a moment. First, though, you guys familiar with this map here I showed last night in the update? Uh, this is the last 30 days of all magnitudes here. We're looking at 4,673 earthquakes in the last 30 days for California, Nevada, and uh, a portion here of Utah. That's a lot of earthquake activity. So what I did here, I went ahead and compared the last 30 days for 2024 compared to this time last year and then the last 30 days for of that time period in 2023. I want to show you guys uh, just what I set in here. Search results. Um, I'm going to show you guys the modified region here. Minimum zero. Starting August, uh, we need to go back here just a little bit. That's going to be... Let's go back here to 86... That should uh, be right, right? That's a month time period. All right, so <clears throat> there we go. It's a little bit better number. I was going to say there was only 800 showing up there, but that was because it was only set for a week. So compare this last year's event to this year's. We're, we're about a thousand earthquakes more than compared to the same period last year for 30 days. That's quite a significant number, right? And if you look at the 2.5 and above area out here, that's 215 earthquakes above 2.5. Now, for this, we can go over here and uh, do that as well. Uh, let's go back and uh, change that up a little bit. Settings. We're going to modify the search to 2.5 and above. Same area, same 30-day period. And uh, goodness, that uh, drops it down a whole bunch there 116 earthquakes compared to 215 earthquakes so we're looking at double the amount of earthquakes uh, in general uh, 2.5 and above and also uh, the microquake level out here so uh, you know things are really picking up here across California here lately in the last 30 days and it could be a sign of things to come for sure in terms of potential further escalation of earthquake activity and maybe even some larger magnitude earthquakes out here so we'll continue to watch that nevada is still swarming out here near the uh, gold field area of nevada got about 39 40 earthquakes here we've seen a couple uh twos and uh, even a couple threes out there throughout the last 24 hours there's that 3.1 earlier this afternoon in that mix uh, a little bit of swarming going on there across nevada as well this area has been consistently swarming uh, in the last few days. Getting a little cluster going on here across this area of the plate boundary. That could be interesting here because we could be looking at uh, maybe some larger uptick here across the area of the, um, well, the creeping section right here runs into the Santa Cruz mountain areas. Uh, that could be a sign that we're looking at maybe some further uptick in this area. A bunch of twos coming in, the largest of 2.8 in this, well, I'll take that back. 3.5 a little bit further down south but this cluster here that's where we've seen the 2.8 right around the san andreas fault but yeah down around avenal area kalinga uh, just off the plate boundary here we've seen that uh, recent 3.3 earthquake this afternoon so think are, things are still on the increase out here uh, more notable up here across this area of the plate boundary southern california extreme southern california here um, a handful of earthquakes. I don't think we've seen anything above 2.5 in the last 24 hours here for this area. Most of the, mo all of this movement here, a uh, microquake level event. And on any given day, this you know, it looks about normal. You know, there's really no major elevated areas um, that I'm seeing here. There's a, a little bit over here across this area of the plate boundary near the Thousand Palms area of California. A couple ones stirring up here right at that bend area um a lot of strain there on the southern branch of the san andreas fault and that uh is a pretty good sign there some microquake activity stirring up there today uh of the increasing pressure 
and the cre increasing likelihood of seeing a larger earthquake out here in Southern California. So got to be prepared, folks. Uh, further up in Northern California, pretty quiet. Washington area as well. Let me check out the trimmer map here tonight. Uh, Cascadia trimmer where the results are in we got about 264 that's a little bit of an uptick from yesterday i think we only seen about 65 so 264 a little bit down into southern oregon and uh, the rest up here around vancouver island ranges and underneath seattle so that's the areas deeper into the cascadia subduction zone below uh, downstream the locked uh, uh, downstream from the locked area which sits up shore here or offshore and upstream uh, from that trimmer activity. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up here. Maybe one little small earthquake, but I do want to double check, see what we got. Uh, Yellowstone seismographs right here. Double check, make sure all the bells are off, which they are. Uh, not a whole lot of earthquake activity. There's that 5.7 in the um, uh, Bolivia area from this morning. But aside from that, uh, there's not a whole lot of localized seismic activity there across Yellowstone. One little spike of an earthquake there on the seismograph, but that's localized to that seismograph station there, the promontory, which sits around the Lake Butte area, Yellowstone Lake area. Uh, aside from that, pretty quiet out here, folks. Not a whole lot of uh, movement there across Yellowstone National Park. Out in the oil fields of Texas, oh yeah, a whole bunch going on out here. And uh, just outside of Pecos, Texas here, got a pretty uh, decent amount of earthquake activity. Again, this is uh, situated out here in the oil fields. You have to zoom in, right? One would never know just looking at this map, but you have to zoom in a little bit closer to see the details here. These are little ponds. There's a dry one out there. Uh, looks like one over here as well. All these road networks lead to pumping operations and fracking operations out here. There's a wastewater pond oil facilities galore out here a lot of these oil pads and holding tanks right there uh, this area is just littered with them and that's where all the earthquake activity is occurring and that's where it will continue uh, for the foreseeable future earthquake way out here in the Atlantic near the Reckonis, uh Ridge area 5.5 it's a little fracture zone out here called the Charlie Gibbs fracture zone Nothing uh, following that earthquake. That's the only one out there for now. Um, some older quake activity up north of Greenland. Aside from that, um, Middle America Trench, South America area. These guys calming down a little bit in terms of the multitude of quakes here. They were pretty active yesterday and the day before. Most of the movement right now looks like it's over here across the Indonesia Islands area westward along the Java Trench there where we got a 5.3 coming in. A fairly recent earthquake right there on the uh, near the Sumatra area just off the coast. Six miles below the surface here. Fairly shallow earthquake. And this region is a major subduction zone and is capable of producing, goodness, some big time earthquakes out here. We're talking upper eights. So, um, yeah, been a little while. I mean, uh, we've had some big ones out here. I'm trying to think when the last, was that 2006, 2008? I don't know. Let's go double check, see what we got. I want to check out 7.0 and above. And we're just going to throw the history books here at it. See what the USGS has stored out here across the Java Trench here. Now, I don't know why I went to the right. Could have went to the left and found it a little bit easier. So the Java Trench is right about here, the southern end of the Andaman Sea up to about this area here and there's some big earthquakes out here just kind of curious of the exact date when that last eight pointer struck oh no nine pointer excuse me that's right how could i forget that that was the other nine pointer 2004 sumatra earthquake remember that tsunami as well goodness that was just, that was up here across the northern end of the uh, java trench goodness uh, prior to that 8.6 within that same area it's a little rare uh, that was a, a, a year later that 
8.4 back in 2007. A couple years later, that's a little bit further down south here. And uh, a lot of older movement quakes out here as well. This region, I'm kind of curious about this region right here. Uh, when was the last time we've seen something major? 7.7, 2006. 1921, 7.6, 7.8, 1994. A lot of older quake activity out here. Uh, but again, this region, there's an 8.3 back in uh, 1977. This area is lacking some 8-pointers out here, and it's very capable. So uh, we've got large-scale movement up here recently in terms of um, time frame. And some 8s back down here. And of course, that 9 way up here. Uh, and not a whole, I mean, there's some 7s out here, but uh, this area might be primed for some larger-scale activity. Nothing going on here within this segment. So yeah, we'll uh, just kind of keep an eye on that. Kind of interesting activity out there right now. 5.3, shallow earthquake. All right, aside from that, uh, see what else we got here. New Zealand area, a couple threes out there. That's some older movement quakes here in the red circles. So not a whole lot of newer movement since the update this morning. A couple twos out here on the eastern coast there of Australia. Look at this, Western Pacific here has gone quiet. Not a whole lot stirring up out here for now. And that's in a, a broad area. Look at that. Goodness. Yeah, that won't stay quiet for long, I can guarantee you. A couple smaller quakes up into Alaska as well. There across Hawaii, got a few quakes up around the Kilauea volcano. But overall, seismic activity has been somewhat limited out here over the last couple days. Haven't really seen that push of any further magma from below to really get things going at the surface levels there. So... Uh, at least the subsurface levels there where all the uh, magma accumulation has been here underneath this area. So just a, a waiting game for now. All right, uh, let's see what else we got. Um, anything else going on here on the globe? I don't see a whole lot. All right, let's go check out space weather activity. And... Um, there's that far side explosion there from uh, earlier this morning. That was a massive, fast moving full halo CME. Uh, happened on the far side of the sun. Uh, the, uh, the area, obviously, that's not facing the Earth and uh, directed away from Earth as far as that plasma cloud. So, no effect here on Earth whatsoever. I was just reading. Um, where did it go? Right here. So I'll get back to the current solar activity here in a minute. I want to show you guys this chart real quick. Look at solar cycle 25 here. That's the current solar cycle we're in in terms of solar maximum. It's supposed to peak here next year, 2025, roughly around June. That's going to be the peak. And look where we're at right now. This is the sunspot number. We are way above the predicted sunspot number which is here in the red line with a, a margin of error on each side but we're way up here almost double the number of uh, predicted or forecasted sunspots for this solar cycle and we haven't even peaked out yet so we are getting into um, a very active solar cycle compared to 2024 the last solar maximum there that was actually pretty weak 2022 or 2002 back here was fairly uh, active but, uh, yeah, it looks like it could be comparable to back in the early 2000s there. But, again, we got a, almost a year uh, uh, before we peak. And then probably a year following that as well of solar activity before it starts to go into solar minimum there around 2030 or so. So we do have, a, you know, we got a couple years here of some interesting solar potential. With the way it's been going here, it's... Uh, it's very interesting. Let me tell you, there's uh, quite a few massive explosions there on the sun recently. And had they been earth directed, could uh, could definitely provide a little bit of interesting uh, activity here on Earth, to say the least. Um, right now, facing the Earth, there's not a whole lot of flaring activity going on. This is the current solar flare flux chart. The X-ray flux chart, one minute data. Here's the last couple days. Just crackling here with some C-flare activity and occasional low-grade M-flare, but really 
not a whole lot going on. The overall threat shows 20% chance for X flare, M flare at 70, C flare around 99% chance or so, and uh, it's fairly modest there, uh, flare threat. And there's numerous areas out here, but uh, as I said last night, they're just kind of sitting out there looking pretty. And um, <laughs> seems like more often than not, these massive sunspots wait until they get further out of the earth directed view and then they decide to put on a show that is very interesting makes me think here the sun has a uh, um, is aware of uh, you know where it's thrown out some flares who knows though uh, either way we'll watch it we got a couple extra years here that uh, you know could see a couple bullseye shots out here um, and that would obviously amplify the aurora conditions pending the uh, pop off a of CME or not. So we'll watch this area. We'll see. Uh, it's fairly complex here. A couple other regions down here popping up a little bit of magnetic structure uh, within that core. And uh, this area over here, really not too concerned with yet. Uh, it doesn't look all that impressive. There's a couple different active regions that will be coming around the eastern limb here in the days ahead that we'll keep our eyes on. Aside from that, fairly low aurora threat out there not a whole lot for those uh, northern light watchers uh let's see what else we got here a real quick glance at the models here forecast weather models that is got uh well we'll put this into motion here i'm just kind of keep an eye on the gulf of mexico eastern portion of the country too uh, some type of tropical development that's been consistent there um around the mexico area forming around the 13th 12th or so of this month and then scooting its way up further northward that could bring a lot of much needed rain there to western texas eastern uh, new mexico area uh, which is good news those guys still need a little bit of rainfall to jump out of the the uh, drought conditions there uh, but aside from that um yeah look at that hurricane out there that's this is another one this is a ways out here though i don't want to get uh i don't want to focus on that too much because that's on around the 21st or so and that is a considerable long range forecast here this could change by tomorrow but it is showing some type of huge hurricane hitting the eastern coast there around this time but uh again don't uh you know don't take that too seriously this is just a weather model and that far out uh the accuracy is probably only about five percent <laughs> if you really think about it if that uh, Northern California, ooh, what do we got here? I hope, I'm hopeful, but again, this is a ways out. That could change for us as well. A little bit of rain out there in Northern California. We could use it. We got one more super hot day here um, before some cooler weather, I guess. If you want to call mid-90s cooler weather, um, I'm not really getting excited about it, but I'm just glad it's not going to be 107, 108 like it's been all summer. We got one more hot day here for the Friday and then it cools down into the mid 90s there for uh, the weekend. Next week uh, looks like about the mid 90s as well out here. Uh, we're upper 80s. I will take that. That's a, the ECMWF model showing that. Not a whole lot of rain forecast out here though. Um, let's see, rain, thunder, rain accumulation here. I just want to check, kind of. A, kind of a, oh I gotta drag this there we go it's kind of a neat little tool but it won't let me go yeah well all right well this ain't really shown too much rain here obviously uh, that one system is supposed to show up around the 20th bringing some uh, rainfall to Northern California supposedly so we'll see what happens but yeah looking at the broader scale some moisture out there from that hurricane or tropical system there Western Texas Eastern New Mexico bunch of rain here across the south we just need a portion of that you know if you guys out there around the south could send a little bit our way i would appreciate it a lot of people out here just love the 110 degree weather and they would love to have it that way all day long or all summer long all winter long all year long i am good with that i am done you can put a big x right here over the west coast i am done with the hundreds forever Hopefully this time next year I will be in a new location. Fingers crossed. All right. Uh, aside from that here, folks, I'm out of here. Have yourself a beautiful night. 
We'll catch you guys back out here for the uh, Friday. We made it to the weekend here. Friday morning update. Till then, have a good night and stay safe out there, folks. We'll catch you guys later.